just, just so you know, Pastor Joe, look at this. All right. This is how women drink. <laughs> opportunity to be with you all, to share with you all. I uh, have to tell you, um, my family is at home, or they should be on their way to church this morning. My husband, John Anthony, of 20 years, uh, in 2020, we go, we will be 20 years in 2020. And I, we, we together have six children, and from ages 17 to two. And I have to tell you, when God disrupts your plans, he gives you twins at the age 40. <laughs> Talking about a holy disruption. I would have to tell you, that is was the disruption um, that has been the exciting things. I said they will take care of me when I'm old, and they will make sure that nobody sticks me in a nursing home. They will be the two that will make sure that they take care of me. But I want to just first honor the man and woman of God of this house, because I have to tell you, they've been a part of my family for a very long time. And Pastor Geddes and I call her my mama, she's my other mother, uh, Mama Geddes, they have been uh, just one of those pillars. And you have to know that there are times in your life there are pillars and there are posts. So there are people that come in your life and they kind of post and those posts can be moved around. But pillars are things that are permanent and they're not going anywhere. And so I honor you today. Thank you for trusting me to, uh, to, to give up your Sunday morning service. Amen. I am honored. And so I uh, want to thank my sister who traveled with me, who she is a pastor and pastors of church in Chicago, Apostle Kim. If you all could give her a hand for, to, for being with me this morning and this is her Sunday morning service and her husband is holding it down in Chicago. And when we landed, we said, oh, because we left 71 degrees in Chicago. Can you all believe that? So we were like, oh, wait a minute, what just happened? So we were not quite ready for you all. We were ready, but we were not ready. And, and so you all brought it in strong, like with snow and is this what we're doing? And so this morning, um, I'm not going to belabor the time, but I want to, uh, God gave me a few things. And the last time I was here in June, um, and I sat on the front row, and I said, next time I come, and I did not know I was coming back, I said, God is calling his people to huddle. And let me give you the definition of a huddle. A huddle is an action of a team gathering together, usually in a tight circle, to strategize, to motivate, to celebrate. This term huddle can be used as a verb. And so this morning, I'm going to disrupt service and I'm going to say we're about to huddle. And so I'm going to ask all of you all that have decided to sit so comfortably in the back to come huddle with me. And I'm, we're going to move some things. And I'm going to ask if you all can move me down. Yes. And we're going to huddle. So I am very untraditional in the sense I don't mind walking to the back and helping people walk to the front. <laughs> so if you, those in the last five rows, would we'll make a decision and we're going to huddle this morning. We're going to strategize. We're a family. Is everybody in here? We're part of the family of God, right? So I'm excited that I get an opportunity to join you and be a part of the family of God. So we're going to shift just a few things. And this row right here, did you all know this was not for pastors only? Right. Like this row likes people too. <laughs> Did you all know this row over here likes people too? I'm so grateful for all of this room. <laughs> but do you know when you get close to the fire and we get close to one another, something begins to happen and there's a fire that gets ignited. When you put wood on top of wood and then you rub it together, what begins to happen? So I'm gonna challenge, are these first two rows, y'all, what would happen? Nobody, I promise 
I took a shower this morning. Y'all can come as close as possible. Because something happens when we come together as a family and we rub up against one another. There's an igniting that begins to happen. And so I was, um, what God gave me this morning, talk, speaking of huddles, so most of the time huddles are about being a part of a team. And so we're a part of the family of God this morning. And sometimes in teams, you gotta be a little bit more intentional when it comes to winning. That winning just doesn't, you don't wake up in the morning and you join a team and you say, we're gonna win today, and you just win. There was some preparation, there were some things that went into winning. Yeah. And so 2 Chronicles, my scripture this morning is 16 and nine, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Yeah to show himself strong yes. on behalf of those whose hearts is loyal to him. Yes. Can we pray? Yes. Father, we honor you today and we thank you for being God and God alone. Yes. We thank you that you have chosen us to walk in this generation, in this dispensation, and that you handpicked us, that none of us in this room under the sound of my voice was an accident. That God, you did, you, you brought them for this time on purpose. And so for that, we're grateful. We welcome your presence and we welcome you to have your way in this place today. And we'll give you worship in Jesus' name. So I don't know about how many of you all um, like football. Yes. And I would have to say that I am, <laughs> is that the only person in here that likes football? I mean, really. And I would have to say to you all, very much so, I would be considered a Fairweather fan. So is he. <laughs> Ooh, somebody says so is he. So am I in the room where there are Viking fans? Yeah. yeah. I'm in the right room. And so, it's interesting that the type of, um, and I don't know how many of you ladies or some gents are like me, is that the only time I get real, real excited about football is at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning the end called the playoffs. Like you will not see me watch football any other time until it's like, who's the team we're re And I ask my son, who are we for? And he'll say, well, we're not for the Bears because they didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I heard that we, we beat the Vikings last. Oh. Did, did we? Yeah. That's what I heard. My husband told me that. Is that what happened? I'm not sure. Okay. So, so, so I think I got your attention just a little bit. Okay. And so, there's some some key things that. Who doesn't like to be a part of a winning team? All right, yes. I mean, you, when you sign up for a team, when you sign up for a team, do you really say, we're signing up to lose? We're signing up because we're not gonna win. You, with intention and purpose in your heart, you say, I'm getting on this team because I, something I have inside of me is going to contribute to the outcome of this team. So you begin to say, but there's, you, you say to yourself, you, I mean, you get dressed, you're looking in the mirror, and you say, we're going to win today yeah. That's right. because I'm on the team. That's right. And there's some personal ownership That's right. that begins to happen when you understand your role. Yes. And many times, if I'm, and I, if I'm a quarterback and I'm playing a different position than the one that I was assigned on the field for, then people are gonna be looking at me a little strange, like, why is she running the wrong way? We're not even on that play. <laughs> and so many a times, there's some key things though, before I move forward, there's some few things that's needed in a team. Yes. So the first one is endurance. All right. The ability to have strength, to yeah. continue, to last, especially despite fatigue, stress, and adverse conditions. And they say it's also a players have to have mental strength. So not just have endurance in the physical, but there's something in the mental, despite the uh, 
situations, the body gets fatigued. So you gotta have some endurance. And then as you have that endurance, there's a second point you need to have. You need to have strength and power to contribute. Sometimes, depending on what your role is, you need some speed. Depending on your role, you may need some agility. And depending on what your assigned role on this team is, for this team to be successful, you gotta have some intentionality. All right. Success is not an accident. Mm -hmm. Come on. When people set out to do something and they want to succeed, they can see it first. All right. They see that thing, I'm going to achieve, I'm going to be successful. And so there's some, there's some shifts in, in mindset and there are situations that come against you to cause you not to want or not to want to be successful or to even not be successful. The third point would be passion and love for the sport. So that means you gotta get out there with some passion. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I always thought it was uh, get hype. Uh, the team gets out there and they get hype. And they rub, they rub riling each other. And what they're doing is they're getting their mental in alignment with their position. All right. So they're aligning themselves to say, we're about to do this. And if I could submit to you this morning, CCI, there's some things God is about to do in this place. Amen. Amen. So I need you to huddle. I need you to rub up against one another. I need you to get mentally strong. I need you to be ready to plant your feet solid and say, no matter what comes, what may, I'm not moving out of my position because I understand that I'm in it to win it. All right. All right. Today, if I could title this message, I left it over here. <laughs> if I could title today's message, it would be in it for the right reason. Yeah. Are you in it for the right reason? Yeah. So the, set, the fourth thing your team needs is coachability. Mm. No matter how talented a player is, they have to be willing to learn from yeah. their coaches. Yes. And so many times, it's a little challenging when you have that player that says, oh, I know that already. Mm. Oh, I know what the next play is. Oh, I know what to do. And the coach is saying, hold on, wait a minute, I changed the play today. Mm. Mm. We're we doing something a little different, like moving from the back to the front. All right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Because some things have to be shaken up. Yeah. And the coach has just a little bit, he's watched enough videos and has enough experience to say, I need some things to shift because I see something different than you see. And when God puts a man or a woman of God in position, sometimes God gives them some direction to say, I'm changing up the playbook. Because yeah. he's holding them responsible for the playbook. So in order for them to change the playbook, then he got to be willing, there's a group or a team that has to be willing to be coachable. Am I by myself in here today? Yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure. Don't, don't leave me, I'm taking some. You know the old preachers, we going somewhere. I didn't know sometimes where we was going, but we was going. Sometimes you have to be willing to accept feedback. Sometimes you have to be willing to accept correction. Sometimes you have to be willing to accept the accolades. And sometimes you have to self-correct and try new actions. So what is it for CCI? I don't know how many of you wanted to be a part of the cool kids in high school, but I wanted to be one of the cool kids. I wanted to be one of the ones that Everybody, and I didn't fit in that category, by the way, mm -hmm. because sometimes when God has something on your life, yes. you stick out like a sore thumb, but it's not the sore thumb that you want to stick out as. Do you know what, anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. When you've been raised in church and 
there's a certain uh, calling on your life or there's something God has picked you out to do, you kind of stick out and no matter how you try to do what the other kids are doing, you always get caught. <laughs> Somebody always telling on you. I'm cutting class and my father shows up at my locker. I'm like, oh, hey. He said, where you been? I said, oh, I was cutting class. And so I understand that and many times, we like teens for the popularity. Mm -hmm. And we want to be on it because this is what everybody's doing. But what happens when the team goes through many transitions? Do you still want to be a part of the team that we're not sure if they're going to still be here next week or next year? Mm. It's good. So I have the greatest of all time examples of the perfect team. And this example will transform your life if you embrace it today. Why do you think Jesus was in it? And let's break that down real quick. Because when I was reading in John the 17th chapter, and I, I'm going to read a little bit in the, out of the Message Bible because I want you to hear it a little bit differently this morning. But I think about Jesus and his journey and why he came and what he needed to come for. And how he came. And do you think he came for prestige? Is anybody here because they think this is the most prestigious thing to do on Sunday morning, which is to show up? And so John, the 17th chapter, I'm going to read it for you, verse 24 and 26, out of the Message Bible. This is Jesus talking. He said, Father, I want those you gave me to be with me right where I am. So they can see my glory, the splendor you gave me, having loved me long before there ever was a world. Righteous Father, the world has never known you, but I have known you. And these disciples know that you sent me on this mission, and I have made it, I have made you very being, your very being known to them who you are and what you do and continue to make it known so that your love for me might be in them exactly as I am in them. So there was something in Jesus in the 17th chapter of John. He was talking to his father. Was, we were coming to a point where he knew his end was near. And so he was having a conversation with his father. So he knew that his, his coming was not prestige. It was not because he could ride in and be king of the Jews and he would have this robe that was long and as the kings did in that time. And so, do you think he came because of the praise? He wasn't accepted in most of the religious settings. They had a problem with him. So praise was not on the list of they really understood who he was. Or do you really think he came and he was in it for the persecution? Because in John chapter 18, here comes the betrayal. Here comes the denial. Here comes the question mark. Are you the king of the Jews? They had questions. And so there was something that Jesus had to have in him to stay in the team, on the team. And he was the team. And so to this morning, if I could submit to you that God is asking you, why are you on the team? What is it in you that he's done for you? What is it that he's stirring in you in this season of your life? That he's saying, that you're saying, I'm on this team. I'm not giving up. And I understand that I'm not just a part of a church. I'm a part of the church of Jesus Christ. Meaning, yes. I understand that there is a movement. There is a revival. There is something in me the world needs. And I must, I must hasten. I must, with a sense of urgency, get about my father's business. Because there's something or someone in mind that I have why I have to take on this new mission for my life. Jesus saw us. In case you didn't know, what kept him in the game? What kept him per being going through every stage of his life was he saw 
you? Jesus. Who do you see? Mm. Because many times we're buried in our problems and in our circumstances where we can't see Jesus. And sometimes we choose to see him and sometimes we don't. And so in this season, God is, uh, there's a clarion call going out to this region. There's an assignment. And whether you feel like, well, I'm not a part of this ministry, it doesn't matter. If you are part of the body of Christ, there is a call. Amen. Amen. There is a clear depiction of who is on the winning team. As I share with the ladies on this weekend, and I have to tell you, I have had quite the Christian experience, and I'll call it adventurous. And what I mean by that, I grew up in the church all of my life. But like many of us, we don't believe, as the old mothers used to say, you don't believe that me, Greasy. <laughs> and you, you don't believe that the water's really hot, so you test the waters. You try out things. <clears throat> And what you come to find out is that I had to begin to not know my mother's Jesus, not know my father's Jesus, my grandmother's Jesus. I had to begin to know him for myself. Yes. Because as I began to know him for myself, there began the transformation. And as I this year dived in, in the beginning of this year, January, the Lord said to me, I want you to write to publish three books. And I've been writing my entire life, but I have never published. And he said, I want you to do this not for you. And not because you want to get booked up in speaking engagements. Let's be real talk. Not because you need money. But I want you to do this because you understand legacy. And if I could submit to you the reason why Jesus did not quit, because he saw you, and I today need you to walk away with who do you see? There has to be a next generation yes. in every last one of you. Yes. You have to see beyond your circumstances. You have to see beyond your struggles. You have to see something bigger than you yes. in order to win. Yes. Because winning, success, is a decision. To say, I, no matter come what, come what may, I'm going to plant my feet because I'm determined to win. Yes. And winning is, can be a relative definition to depending on the person. And what winning looks like to me may not look like winning to you. But when my marriage became being very challenged, I'm going to get real, real. Come on. When my marriage got challenged and divorce was in my lineage, meaning my mother and father divorced and my grandmother divorced three times. And when you see what's in your past is fighting against you and you're faced with the very same decision. What do you do? Who do you see? Do you see yourself? Do you see your selfishness and what you, what's not happening and who's not cooperating and who's not doing what? Is that generational thing pulling you so back? To, to, to a place to say, I, this is impossible, I can't do this. What is it for you? What sin that so easily besets you that keeps pulling you back to say, I can't do this. I can't live this Christian walk. And God had a sense of humor to give me five girls. And he sat me still and said, are you going to hand them that? Are you going to hand them divorce? Because you don't, you, you, you don't like the fight. And you want to get out of the game. Come on. Are you going to hand it to them? Or are you going to fight? Come on. And you're going to overcome yes. what was. And you begin to set a new pace for the next generation that says, it's worth the fight. It's worth moving forward. It's worth it. And I know you want to leave, and I know this addiction has you because it had somebody else in your past. But what are you going to do today? Are you going to make a new decision and say, uh uh, I'm going to fight? Because Jesus saw me, then I must see the future generations that are within me, and I must fight 
because it's worth the fight. And so I chose to fight. All right. When it didn't look like favorable, I chose to fight. What are you fighting? Because believe me, we're all fighting something. We're all in, in, in some type of battle. And we want the victorious life. Yes. But do you know the victory comes when the enemy no longer has power over you? That's the victory. That's the joy. Yes. Jesus said, who for the joy that was set before him, yes. he endured the cross. Yes. What's the joy you see? You got to find the joy in why you're serving Jesus. Yeah. You have to find the joy in why you chose to stay. Yeah. You have to find the joy. This job is beating me down and I can't do it anymore. What's the joy? Who have you been called to reach? Why you can't get off that job? Because somebody on that job needs what's in you, yeah. but you've kept your mouth closed because you haven't really been living this thing real, real, real. So then you say, well, I can't really tell them I know Jesus. What is the hope that lies within you? Yeah. What is it? Because somebody needs. Why is my business stagnant? Why can't it grow beyond me? What is it? Why can't I finish this degree? Why do I keep falling on my face? You got to find the joy. Amen. And if your joy is not rooted in Jesus, I found that my success became stifled because my motivation was wrong. Because mm. I was in it for me. Mm. Who I needed to become. Wow. Who I wanted to be. Wow. Mm. And God said, I got a joke for you. Mm. It's called Karis and Jariah. <laughs> Those are my twins. <laughs> because what they did for me was they taught me that my plan ain't the best plan. What they showed me was, I really wanted to control my life. And I'll tell you, I was ambitious. I was a 20 year old, came out of college at 20 years old, got my first job, $50,000. You could tell me nothing because I had a plan. And in 1998, that was a lot of money right. for a 20 year old. <laughs> and so in that ambitious, if that's a word. <laughs> what I found is that God will get what he's after if you give him a yes. yes. But if you find yourself struggling consistently, I'm going to challenge you to give him another yes. yes. But this time, give him your yes of your plan. Yes. And I am the backup, backup, backup plan girl. Any, any, am I alone? No. <laughs> Where we develop these plans of how we want the game to be played. And when that disruption comes, we're angry at the church. Come on, let's talk real talk. Right. Come on. Right. They sold me a bill of goods. They told me if I served Jesus and I came my life to Christ, that everything would work out perfect. Some of you in this room, there's a generation that needs what you have. That's right. I believe, and I share with the ladies this weekend, that because God uniquely fashioned us together, no matter the age or stage in life, if there's breath in your body, God has a plan for you. Amen. And so, as I close, and I am not a five closer, I'm a one closer. Jesus had to be in it for the right reason. And if he had not been in it for the right reason, where would we be? This morning, I want to challenge something in your heart. I want you to make a recommitment. Mm. 
Yeah. I'm not asking you to give your life to Christ again. And there may be some of you that need to rededicate your life to Christ or receive Christ. But this morning, I'm talking to those that have been called to CCI. Yes. I'm talking to you in particular, which is, why are you in it? And in football, they have what they call sideliners. And my sister likes to call me a sideliner. <laughs> but I believe that sideliners got a lot of opinions. They ain't on the field. <laughs> you should have. Right. If you had did this play, right. <laughs> this would have happened. This would have been the outcome. But sideline is not a lot to say, and they really got, they're noisy. Mm -hmm. And I didn't say they were cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. I said they were sidelines. Come on. They were observers. Mm -hmm. They were people that watched on the sidelines of the game, and they made the most noise, mm -hmm. had the strongest opinion but they weren't willing to do the work to get on the field. All right. Come on. <laughs> so this morning, I wanted to challenge you to get on the field. Yes. That's good. At whatever stage or age you're in, we have room. That's right. That's there right. is room. There's room. So that means do not disqualify yourself and say, I paid my dues in the church. I'm done. I served for 40 years now. In this season, God needs your wisdom. That's right. So I appreciate and I applaud you for serving. But now I need your wisdom. Young people, we need your strength. Yes. We need your innovation. Yes. We need your energy. Yes. We need your commitment. Yes. Because this generation is trying to turn out to be the most godless generation that we've ever seen. Jesus. Jesus. I was arguing with someone and then I said, oh, we're not talking about the same Jesus. Ooh. Mm. We're talking about a different Jesus. Yeah. Not the Christ, the one, the one of Nazareth, the one, the living God, the one that got up. Mm. I, I forgot we weren't talking about the same one. Mm. And so in that, God is asking you this morning. He brought me here on a simple assignment. Mm. And that's for you to give God another yes. Mm. And many times when we're giving God another yes, or we're asking you to recommit mm. to not the pastors of this church. But we're asking you to commit mm. to give God your temple of the Holy Ghost, yes. to give him your gifts, talents, yes. your time, and your treasure. Yes. That you begin to understand that when you pour out, you're pouring into your children's children's yes. children. Yes. That you understand legacy enough to know when I serve, when I give my time, my talent, and my treasure, I'm sowing into the ground yes. for my children to walk upon and my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. I promise you, I didn't write this book for my children because they, they laugh at me. The only one that's interested in my book is my six-year-old. <laughs> but there will come a time of maturity, they will understand some things. Yes. And they will say, my grandmother and my great-grandmother left us a road map. Yes. And she left us something to let us know who we were. Yes. That there was a God of her salvation. Yes. And so many times, the, the, our, our, our dysfunction is that we don't see beyond us. And my prayer today is that your commitment is God help me to see beyond me. Because it's really at the end of the day, what you have in you is what the world needs. And this is our finest hour. The grounds are rumbling for revival. Yeah. The people are waiting to get in. Yeah. There's a rumbling going yeah. on right now. Yeah. And the ground is preparing itself for the yeah. revival and the soon coming king. So you have to be in position because there is a rumbling in the spirit right now. And the people of God have to be in position. And yes, we have to get healed.
healed. And yes, we have to allow God to heal our, heal, heal our brokenness. So that we have something to give because there's people that need what we have more than sometimes we need it. And if I put this mic around the room, you could tell me story after story of someone who needs something greater than your need. So we should have the houses for the homeless. We should have the, the food lines for the people to eat. The you know, church is, we, our assignment is greater than us. If this world decides to fall apart, are we ready to receive? But I need you. 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 I need every person under the sound of my voice to let something arise in you. To say, God, have need of me. And it's beyond. Yeah. And I want to apologize for the pastor that abused you. I want to apologize for the molestation that was happening. I want to apologize for the person that abused you. I want to apologize and say I'm sorry for the abandonment. I want to apologize and repent to you that I'm sorry if nobody told you they were sorry. You were taken advantage of. But today, there's a warm salve of healing coming yes. through this place. Yes. And God says, I'm healing the broken. I'm strengthening you. I'm causing you to lock arms. And as that wood rubs up against each other, there's a fire. And as you all lock arms with the vision of this house, there's a fire. Yes. There's an igniting that begins to happen. Yes. And you don't just take over a block. Come on. Come on. You take over a city Come on. that takes over a region, oh, that takes over a nation, yes. that goes in and out. Yes. This is an international ministry. Yes. That means the seeds you plant in other countries, yes. you receive the blessing of that thing. Yes. So you don't just get the blessings of this city, but because you all have been called to the international ministry, yes. there's a blessing of someone's children on another country, on another continent, that you receive the yes. blessing for yes. on your life because you gave. Yes. Well, I can't go to the other countries, but your money can. Yes. Come on. Yes. I'm closing. Number two. <laughs> The mission of this church. If you see yourself anywhere in this mission, I want you to stay. We are worshipers in pursuit of God. Participate in a diverse forms of worship. We're followers of Christ, developing spiritual habits and growing toward maturity in Him. We are participants who reinvest our gifts within our community. We are friends who are intentional about building healthy relationships that no one walks alone. We are witnesses who believe that people matter to God. And I'm going to stop there. You matter to God. But you not just matter to God. When you don't show up, something didn't get done. This isn't about guilt. This isn't about... Because I could sit at home and watch the finest preachers on Sunday morning. I could pick which orator I want to hear. But when you abandon community, and the reason God puts you with the person sitting next to you, they need what you have. Yes. And when you put the responsibility on feet of clay, and that's what I call the men and women of God, they're feet of clay. Yes. They've been given an assignment, but you're just as called if of them called, if not more. Yes. They just happen to be called the coaches of this house. And God gave them a playbook. So as 
Apostle Kim comes, she's going to pray over this house. And if you need to, in this moment, repent, repent. God, forgive me. I miss you, God. But I thank you that you are God of the third, or fourth, fifth, sixth, hundredth chance. <laughs> and so as she commands a blessing over this house, I want you within your heart, just recommit. It's simple. It's real simple. You can't do nothing about yesterday. But you have everything and the more in front of you than you could ever imagine. You can't fix you, but I know a God who can. God bless you. Before the apostle comes to pray, there are some things that God has been laying on our hearts, and I feel that it's important for you to know some of these things. As I had the opportunity to take her through the church on, I think it was Friday, she wanted to see the building. And as I walked through the building, I began to ask God, why is this place empty? We have so much square yard, square footage here. And yet the rooms are empty. And the needs out there are great. My response to her was, God need to give us some dreamers. We need some dreamers in the house. We need some people that can see beyond us. One of the dreams that God has given me, given where he has planted us here on 13th and Lake Street, and knowing what I know about what our brethren are doing, training their kids up to meet our kids and my grandkids. They drop their kids off every Sunday morning, every Saturday morning, and they pay to teach them the Quran. My grandkids is going to meet those kids. One of my visions is to build a state-of-the-art children's church that know the word and that know how to build businesses so that they can be dynamic on every front, so that they can meet that generation that they're going to come in contact with. That's a dream. That's a vision that I have. And I have no way of knowing how this is gonna turn out. At the women's retreat, it was just CCI women there. And as we looked around the room, the diversity that was in the room, the richness that was in the room, the, the vision that was in the room just stirred my heart. And I began to say, God, we don't have the answer or the floor plan. There's not a blueprint for what God wants to do here, in this house, but he wants to give it to us. And each one of us possess it. As our apostle come, I want you to begin to ask God to allow you to see beyond yourselves. There's a shift. There's a shift in the atmosphere. Yes. There's a shift in the spirit realm. Yes. And we want to align ourselves up with God's vision. Yes. Not with our plan, but with God's vision. Yes. Will you pray? If you're willing, would you please close your eyes and just raise both your hands. Father, we surrender to you. We yield right now, God, our plans yes. and our desires, God, for yours. Father, we willingly commit, hallelujah, to fulfill what you have for this ministry, God, for this city, God, for our communities, God, for our families. Yes. Oh, God, for your heart is for our families. Hallelujah. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would...
Help us to be your hands and feet in this earth realm. Help us our steps to be amplified, Father. Uh, that we will fulfill your call and your duties. And God, that we would do it with love that we would do it with compassion, yeah. that we will use every gift that you have ordained us in the earth realm to be. Father, that you would have a smile on your face, yeah. for we desire to please you in everything that we say and that we do. Yeah. And so, Father, even now we recommit. God, we stretch higher, yeah. and we yield that you will stretch out in us. Yes. So be thou glorified in these vessels, God. Yeah. Be thou glorified in this temple, God. Be thou glorified in our families, O oh God. Help us to connect with one another and love on one another like never before. Let there be a bound of love that, yeah. hallelujah, shares from breast to breast yeah. and heart to heart. Yeah. Bind us so closely together in love, God, yeah. uh, that one can't fall for the other holding them up. And we'll give you praise. Yeah. Let the people of God begin to praise him. And we'll give him glory. And we give you honor for the rest of our lives. Hallelujah. Now, if you would just declare this, I decree, I decree what, has declared, what has been declared. We will, we will operate, in love. operate in love. We will, we will be, father's be Father's hands and feet in this earth realm. In this earth realm. Amen. 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 Amen.